Johnny Depp's Forward for Doug Stanhope's book, Digging Up Mother, A Love Story. Dear reader, how do I describe my friend? He is a depraved, debauched, accidental, reluctant guru, whom often doubts how great he really is, and wears old, mix-matched, bright suits and ties that were likely once some dead fucker's Saturday night prowling outfit. A true man of the people, who says what must be said, for no one else ever will. Total honesty, consequences be damned. No fluffy outside, no creamy inside. You get what you get, and you fucking deal with it. For here in this life, where the only real certainty is the ceasing of breath, and a healthy death tax for our loved ones, he is the one man whom dares to plunge the cold dagger of truth deep into the collective, brain-dead psyche of our species, for the ultimate benefit of all humankind. And certainly, not since my dearest friend, father of gonzo journalism, Hunter S. Thompson, have I known a man with such a strong, profound sense of moral justice. It makes me sick, so I guess I must ultimately admit that I do not like this man I speak of. I fucking love him. Him, of course, being Doug Stanhope. Work hard all week. Don't, yeah, don't do that. (laughs) Don't drink on weekends either. When people come out Friday, Saturday, don't drink. If you're gonna feel like shit tomorrow, drink Sunday through Thursday. If you're gonna feel like shit, do it on the company dime. What are you gonna do on Monday morning that you need to be wide awake and alert for, right? Oh, I deliver Pepsi products. We'll do it with a hangover. Fuck them. Drink on the job. I can waste your nice weekend. You could be doing something good for yourself. I'm only drinking tonight just to keep up my Cal Ripken like perfect attendance streak. But it's just token, you know? Whatever. If you don't do shit you hate, people work jobs they hate. Hey, there's, there's another way. Whatever it is you do, f- fucking quit. Go in Monday and steal a bunch of shit and quit. If you don't absolutely love it, if you wouldn't do it for free, and steal big shit, too. Don't grab some you know, stationery and paper clips just to make a statement. Grab some big cash registers and computer monitors. Get the fuck out. People talk to you, and they, they, they try to convince you that they like what they do just because it sucks less than what they used to do that sucked a lot. And they'll try to convince you like it's going to make them really enjoy it. I love my job. They regurgitate shit their guidance counselor taught them in high school that got them into a shitty job to begin with. And they regurgitate all that rhetoric. They say, I like my job at Banana Republic because I get to work with people. (laughs) Work with people. You stack pants for fuck's sake. (laughs) The people you meet say, I'm just looking. And they try to get away from you. That's not how it works to work with people, go to whore or something, you know, do something. Oh. I had two women walk out of a show in Minneapolis, which is nothing out of the ordinary. People will leave. It's... I go on stage, it's like I'm leading you into battle. You're not all gonna be here at the end. You know? it, just try not to take it too seriously. Eventually, I'm gonna hit a subject that you're gonna be queer about and go, yeah, but don't. Just wait for the next joke and you know, go take a piss or whatever you have to do. And I don't get all upset. I have. I, I'm probably wrong about half the shit I say, and I'm. 
You can find me to be a hypocrite about... I, I will call you stupid for not knowing shit that I just found out yesterday. And... <laughs> what are you fucking... People don't pick up... You don't read conspiracytheory.com, you fucking losers. I read that yesterday. I'm smart. I had two women walk out of a show in Minneapolis... And again, it wasn't because it was, it wasn't something I said. It wasn't they, they, some people just show up places to complain. That's their form of entertainment is complaining. They just can't wait to bitch. And these women walked out uh, and they caused a ruckus with the manager in the lobby because I'm drunk. That's their reason. They're just, he's just drunk up there. We didn't pay to see this. Look at him. He's obviously drunk. It's, it's just drunk is that. You got, I'm not driving a bus, motherfucker. What do you care? What? I'm a comic. I'm, I'm saying stuff. Words are coming out of my mouth. It's not like I'm curled up fetal. I shit my pants. I, it's not like I'm a spectacle. I'm, just, I'm a comic. What do you give a fuck? It's like, the, it's like the steroids in baseball. What do you give a shit? You just paid to watch balls fly over your head like a retard. Hey, it's a ball. What do you, what? Do you care what makes it go out? You don't give a... That's like going to a titty bar and complaining because your lap dancer is a communist. So what? The tits are out? What did you pay to see? What is your problem? Who are you people? Alcohol doesn't get credit where credit is due. And it's not the best drug. It's not even in the top five, but it's, it's the easiest one to get. And we are a fat, lazy country of convenience. And alcohol is a very convenient drug. If this, were, if this was an ecstasy bar, I would come in, I'd order a large, I'd be <laughs> drinking Evian right now, right? But, but it ain't that easy to get. And at the same time, if drinking required that I had to sit in a fucking Denny's parking lot for two hours in the middle of the night waiting for my friend Alan to answer his voicemail and finally show up just to drop off a six pack, yeah, I'd never drink again. A lazy fuck is what I am. But it's got benefits, it doesn't get the credit. You can find every statistic and number and pie chart for where alcohol has ruined the party. But you, they, you, the benefits, uh, for a while, uh, airline uh, flight attendants were trying to lobby to get alcohol taken off of airplanes. Because they said, you know, 91% of all air rage incidents are alcohol related. Okay, fine. How much air rage is averted because of alcohol, right? <laughs> How many times was someone just about to choke out that sky cunt that should have been replaced by a Coke machine years ago? They're the worst now. now since 9-11, they're all full of that hero syndrome in their head, and they think they're the last line of defense to the cockpit rather than a waste of space and polyester and maybe someone gets on the plane and he's just been finger fucked way too many times trying to get from point A to point B and waiting in lines and screened and searches it's everything but looking in your ass is the only difference between that and a prison search and he goes through that he gets to the front gate and they go, uh, yeah, we accidentally oversold this flight. We're looking for volunteers who will sit another night in Memphis because we goofed and oversold the flight. If I had a used car and I sold it to three different people and I took cash, they all show up on the same day to pick it up. I'm... I'm looking for two volunteers who will wait till I... I accidentally oversold this piece of shit Dodge Omni. I'm... It would fucking kick me in the balls. I would be doing jail time for fraud. Maybe someone goes through all that and he's about to tear out the larynx of the pig that tells him to sit up straight during takeoff because he's had enough. But no, he has a few vodka Collins first and he chills out just enough to let her live one more day. How many times has alcohol been the hero? How many highway fatalities have been caused because of the .08 DUI law? Where everyone is so paranoid now that one fucking thick neck like you has two light beers at happy hour. 
But you're so paranoid because of the DUI laws. You're driving home. You're not even looking at the road. You're just staring in the rear view mirror looking for cops. You don't even notice you hit a kid on a bike in a crosswalk. You can't find the numbers on shit like that, right? I think a, a drug dealer sells me drugs and I go haywire and fuck something up. They blame the drug dealer. I think you hit a kid on a bike in a crosswalk looking for cops, you should blame the cops. <laughs> There's only two types of people who are against drugs. There's people who have never done drugs and the people who really sucked at doing drugs. And everyone else has to suffer. That's, uh, that's why the whole medicinal marijuana thing. I mean, I've done some benefits for them, but I, first of all, I'm not a pot smoker. I've tried it, gave it plenty of opportunities. It didn't work for me. If it works for you, have at it. But, uh, but, but just the argument where it's, it's a pro-drug argument, but the fact that they have to say it's, you know, this is just about uh, medicine. Uh, no, if you're going to have a pro-drug argument, start the argument where it starts. It's my fucking business. Fuck off. I mean, you don't put that on the sign. You're going to use tact and stuff that I don't have. That's why I'm not in charge of any of those things. But, I mean, but, but they have to do it. They, the reason, it boils down to old fucks vote. And that's the problem with this country. Old fucks vote and we don't. We have shit to do. Old fucks have nothing to do but judge you and vote. They don't have to work at UPS on Super Tuesday. They have nothing to do. Hang around the polls, judge you and vote. They're bitter, why is he smiling? It must be something wrong with you. Yeah, vote no on whatever it is he's doing. He's smiling. We don't vote, we got shit to do, right? And that's why they have to put the argument in old people context. Don't worry, old people are gonna, baby boomers are gonna start to die in droves and it's a good thing. I know a lot of them are our parents, but sorry, you're gonna go. Sorry, Ma, go goodbye, right? Yeah, your day's over and there's new shit that you won't accept because you, people do that. Old people, they, they look back at the good old days and it was good because they were young. But they act like it was the day. No, it was because youth is good. That's gone and you're fucked. <laughs> it's not the day and then they reject anything that's new. It's like we do with fucking hip hop if you're in your 30s. Oh, fuck that, that ain't music. We had music back when 38 Special was around. Why no? Let's all fucking kill ourselves for the hypocrisy, right? But that, that, that's why they use the medicinal marijuana argument because that if you put it in a medical context, now old people are all sympathy and heartstrings. You know, you, oh yeah, oh, we don't want to get high. This is really just about Jimmy with glaucoma. Bring out Milky Eye Jim. He gets to the old people, and old people see the milky eyes, and they go, my friend Fran from Normandy had milky eyes the last time I saw him, and I vote yes, right? And it's a bullshit argument, but it, it wastes too much time. Start the argument where it starts. I have the right to do whatever the hell I want to my own body. If it kills me slowly, happy for me, fuck you, clack, clack, stop me. Right? Start the argument, because you're wasting my time. You're gonna spend, you're gonna spend 25 years so Milky Eye Jim can get a, a government subsidized bong hit of some dirt weed. I wanna buy mushrooms at Walmart tomorrow. Let's fucking just, Fight this one out. All illegal narcotics are medicinal. Boredom is a disease worse than cancer. Drugs cure it. With little or no bad side effects if used as directed. Life's temporary for a reason. It's, it gets boring after a while. It does. It's like a good sitcom. It lasts so many seasons and then they got nothing else to do, no more ideas, so they add a fucking alien or an adopted kid and then it's off the air and you go, thank God, it's over. Because life gets boring as shit. I'm 37, I'm already bored. I, 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 I've, I've had a weird life. I've done some crazy shit, but I did it too quick and I got no more ideas. My imagination can't keep up with... <laughs> I'm bored out of my tit. I Invent new drugs. That's what you should be doing, don't... Fight the old ones, fight to get new, weirder ones or something. And weirder establishments to do them in and better. And more holes. That's what you ladies need, more holes. That, was, that would help out. That would, 
perk me up. A new and an exciting hole. Right? That whole right wing, they're all against the cloning because they're afraid of the mutations. Well, science isn't advanced. All the mutations we could have. Well, maybe the mutations is where we find the answer, huh? Maybe I accidentally spit out a little girl baby that's got 44 of 90 holes all over her body. Just big, flappy, ugly holes. And you go, ah, now a long-term commitment is a viable option, right? <laughs> Where's the dowry? I want that one for an everlasting. Why do you always try to fuck me in the shoulder hole? Why do you do that? I, Cause you won't let me fuck your shoulder hole. But why can't you just make love to my chest cavity like when we first met? You were all sweet all the time. Well, just let me put the head in it. It's sore, stop it. I think you're gay. I, that's, I think you're gay. Mutations are exciting. There's not nearly enough of them. They try to fix it when they come. Did you, did you, did you see the two-headed baby they killed last month when they tried to cut it apart? This is hilarious. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I... There was a two-headed... This well, There have been four in the last like year, all in Central America. I don't know what they put in the water, but I'm going down there because... But there were like four in a year, and they try to separate them all. I think one survived. That they, they, you know, one out of four, they're good for, which still keeps you in the majors. But yeah. <laughs> but the other ones, I understood why they cut it apart, because the the other ones were the regular side by side Siamese twins, and they, we've all seen that. So yeah, sure, lop one of them up, but <laughs> right. It's attached at the sternum. Sure, cut them apart. It's a hack oddity. It's like having a bearded lady baby. Okay, we've seen it. Shave it. Go ahead. I don't. But this one was a. This one was a sp special. One. Does you, anyone know what the fuck I'm talking about? The, it had the second head growing out of the top of the bottom head. It's like a. It's like a, a totem pole. It was like a. It's a, 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 a townhouse head baby. It's, like a, it's, a, it's a condo, and that's. Unprecedented. Keep that one around, douchebag. You don't try to scissor that one apart. I want to see that one grow. That, yeah, I'll, I'll get the Guinness Book World of Records again to see this one as a full grown little lady, right? <laughs> Come on. I mean, they, had to, they had to cut it off, and this is why I understood, because they had to try to take the top one off. Well, I mean, Obviously, <laughs> you can't cut the bottom one off and move the top one down. <laughs> that wouldn't work. But, but they said they said they had to move. Take, they, they took off the top head because it was uh, it had an underdeveloped brain. It had little formed eyes and lips, but it, it, it had an underdeveloped brain, and you can't do that to the low baby without its consent, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I have friends who work with developmentally disabled people and uh, on their own free will, and, and it's a really ambitious thing, and you gotta have a lot of heart to do that, but you can't just stick a kid with a retard that close to it your whole life, just trying to go through your day as a, you know, just trying to read your Nancy Drew mysteries, and it's up there going, Dad, Mom, Mom, I'm trying to read, it's drooling Cheerios on me, Mom, it's drooling Cheerios. Stop it! You can't do that. Kid, but but I'm telling you, you know what? This club has some of the hottest waitresses you'll see in any club around here. And just let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If I was upstairs at the bar and all of these waitresses were sitting along the bar, butt ass naked and a full-grown, two-headed girl baby walked into the bar for a cocktail, I would turn away from the naked girls and go straight to her like a bug light. Because that would be interesting. <laughs> fuck you, you... Yeah, oh, I'm sick, fuck. You wouldn't fuck. If a two-headed girl baby came into the bar and you're all alone sitting up there at last call, you're gonna tell me you wouldn't at least get a knobber in the toilet? <laughs> Just to tell your friends you've finally had that menage a trois. <laughs> Dude, they were twins, that's all I'm saying. They were twins. Fucking sisters. 
retarded one. Then you'd, you'd fuck, mouth fucked a low headed baby. You wouldn't fuck the. You, you guys. And you'd have to do it in that 69 position with you on top. So that way your balls would muffle the mouth of the ru rubber head. Because you can't come when you're, you know. You're trying to concentrate. You know, hey, well, I want a swing set, man. Right? So you'd have to have the balls laid over. Ooh. At least till you jizzed in that. And you certainly couldn't get it in the orth couldn't get it in the orthodox kneeling position, because then rubberhead's looking up at y'all walleye, dude. Hello! Do you like my sister? No! Of course I like your sister. Look down. That's, that's what I need. I need me. I need a 44-hole, two-headed baby girl. That's the only way I can come. You know who's tempting me a lot lately? Oh no, I don't. The transvestites. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Judge not, lest you be judged, my friend. They're good now. You, you got the they're transvestites. They build them from scratch now. It's not like the you know, 25 years ago, a transvestite's just some old dude in a wig on a Dunkin' Donuts commercial. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. There you go. Ah. No, they're, they're good. You don't even have to pretend you got tricked anymore, right? <laughs> It's like, what do you, because they, they get everything. They got the breast implants and they got the ass implants. They got cheek implants. They got uh, hair extensions. They got all the electrolysis and collagen lips. And you're going, oh, how much surgery do they need before I'm not gay for doing it? There's going to be some line in the sand that you draw. Right? I'm staring right at her, topless in a G-string, and I don't, I'm going, I know you get a penis, but even if she had a vagina, I'd still probably try to poon her in the ass anyway, so what's the difference? What's the difference? How do I lose? I, I don't need any new friends of respect from you. That's why I, hang on. That's why I eat breakfast at a place in LA. It's called the Yukon Mining Company. It's a shit restaurant, but it's got a smoking patio. It's outdoors so I can actually smoke and eat my breakfast at the same time. Ooh, what a free country we live in. Hey man, how's it going? I forget your name. How you do? Good to see you. Anyway, some guy I know, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, so I eat breakfast there and uh, because, uh, at, but Santa Monica Boulevard, that's where all the transvestites hang out in LA. It's, and you've seen transvestites. Seattle, you get plenty of... I'm sure you you drive past a gay bar on Saturday night and you see them all lined up, dressed up like Judy Tenuta or Diana Ross or something. But you see the nighttime dolled-up transvestites. They're all ready to, you know, lip-sync a you know, Billy Ocean song or something, whatever they do. Or you don't see the breakfast transvestites. A breakfast transvestite, that's the one that will queer you away from the nighttime transvestite. Because when you see them shuffling in at 8.30 in the morning, <laughs> they don't have a wig on anymore. The makeup is all smudged and five o'clock shadow shooting through it. They still got really nice tits, but the dick is flopping around in sweatpants with no underwear. And you're going, man, thank God I didn't have that last shot of Jägermeister. <laughs> This could have been an awkward goodbye. Did you see the Mississippi dildo bust yesterday? Again, as one person it was on CNN. They, three states have uh, now, it's a part of the whole FCC and the indec indecency crackdown they're having, and now three states have, uh, are enforcing anti-dildo laws. I don't know what they call them, but anti-dildo pretty much gets the point. They were, it was on CNN, footage of big fat, Pig cop walking out with fucking garbage bags of dildos, smiling, cause he's real he's finally put his foot down. And then head pig dildo is talking to about how it's to protect the physical and mental safety of our citizens. Yeah, you yeah, the physical, yeah. What if one of these double dongers had got into the hand of a child? What happens then? You don't want to see the child that has tried to use this implement of Satan into it. 
This could pull your anus inside out like an elephant's trunk. Do you want to see our children walking down the street holding their lunchbox in one hand and their truncated rectum in the other like a bleeding sea snake? What is that? I'm not picking on cops. Cops are, for the most part, cops are just doing their job. And I, just, I, I had to do a benefit show and I make jo jokes about cops because they're an easy target for a joke, but I had to do a benefit show for fallen uh, families of fallen police officers. And I, I mean, it's something that makes you think because uh, you do fuck with them, but it, it makes you realize they do risk their lives every day and get shit on all around. <laughs> if you're a cop and you're sitting here, I'll buy you next drink, seriously. Are you, are you a cop? You're in training? This is sweet. <laughs> Because I'm lying. No, I'm making all this shit up. This is a sting operation. Here's your training right here. You know, you know how the cops do you when you get a, a warrant, you forget to pay a, a traffic ticket, so they send you a thing. Hey, you want a free TV. Uh, and you go, woohoo, I'm a winner. And you run down there with your thumb in your ass. Hey, I'm a winner. And then they arrest you and make fun of you on the news. This is a reverse sting. <laughs> I just want to see where you egomaniacs are sitting in case I want to score drugs after the show. I know who to avoid. I, I, I did a benefit for fallen police officers. Yeah, it was called the Pigs and Blankets Foundation. I masturbated through the whole event with a pinwheel hat on right in the front row. They don't risk their lives for you. He's going to risk his life, but it's gonna, since when did risking your life become something that people see as out of the ordinary. Everyone, people risk their lives all the time, every day, and, and they do it for fun. They, they drink and drive, and they bungee jump, and they do crazy shit all the time. It, it's not because of you. They fuck last call whores without a condom. Woo, that ain't risking their life for the whore. <laughs> right? People risk, they don't risk their lives for you. They risk their lives for the, the low level of celebrity involved in being a cop. You risk it, it's all about the ego. People wrestle alligators too, but never once has someone done it without an audience, all right? You see what I'm saying? If you're, if the cops are in. If I were a cop, I'd be an angry motherfucker right now, and I'll tell you why. Because... The hero pussy that motivated you into the force? After 9-11, there was a, such an amazing glut of hero pussy. Cops couldn't walk out of their house. You didn't have to be anywhere near New York City. Cops all across, their girls just see the uniform and they would stop, drop, and suck his dick. He's a hero. Get a girl, hero, get that hero dick. Uh, you couldn't walk out of your house without hero pussy being vaulted at you out of a catapult like rotted octopus slapping you in the face. Hero pussy, you'd have to carry a tennis racket. Have you gone through tennis racket training yet? You carry a tennis racket to swat hero pussy to the ground so you can get to your call in time. And that placated you for a while. All the cops were happy for a while, but then the war started and the hero pussy market all shifted to the military. All the military guys are getting the hero pussy. And the cops, they're, they're still cops today. You can spot them in bars. They'll carry pictures of the Twin Towers around with them trying to remind the dumb chicks. Remember me? <laughs> I'm on Homeland Defense, yeah. Yeah, this could happen right here in Renton if I wasn't very vigilant, you know? Will you at least touch it? Will your skanky friend watch me jack something? <laughs> Who's your friend in the camouflage? Fuck this, I'm joining the fire department. This is bullshit. <laughs> The troops, though, troops are different. You gotta support the troops, right? Yeah. Wrong again. <laughs> you keep trying, but yeah, I, I'm not saying don't support the troops. I'm saying I, I support people on an individual basis. 
I gotta meet the troop first. If I meet the troop, he's a cool troop, we drink, and he doesn't turn into a dildo, yeah, I'll support him. I'll support him no matter what he's, he does. I'll write his specific name on the yellow ribbon so they know it's just the PFC James Campbell or whatever his fucking name is, and then he can do whatever he wants. He could go AWOL or drop bombs on his own guys and Canadians or whatever, and I'll go, hey, he's having a bad day. I know that guy, I drank with him, he's cool. Right? But some troops are dickheads. Some troops are, you know them, they're some of fucking assholes. I was down in Colleen, Texas by Fort Hood. There was a troop down there in a bar and he wanted to hammer my head flat because I accidentally dumped over his piss warm draft beer. I had, and he was fucking, you know how they get the fucking forearm swinging forward? The fucking monkey redneck fucking, oh, you want to kick my ass? I didn't support that troop during the war. I did not. That troop was a shithead, and I hoped he died first. That's the only reason I watched that boring. Yeah, yeah, no, I wanted to see his little peanut head explode on CNN on a choppy, sad-like feed, because he's a fucking asshole. He's not fighting for your freedom. He's fighting because he's a psychopath that wants to kill somebody. He found a good outlet, and that's good, right? That's why I'm pro-war, as long as it's voluntary. This war was voluntary. I mean, there's no draft. They weren't yanking kids out of the inner city and making them go fight a war. Everyone who joined the military joined the mil military because they kind of want to go kill other people, right? <laughs> and that's good. That's your instinct. Your instinct is your true God. Follow it. If you just want to fucking kill someone, there's a place for it. <laughs> the, go to the military. As long as people who kind of want to go kill other people are going to kill other people who kind of want to go kill other people, you're killing all the right people and opening up all the best parking spaces because people who want to kill other people are the last people I want to party with because I get mouthy when I drink. So go, you know, yeah, have a big killing free-for-all. Make up wars. Fight over Antarctica. Call it Manifest Destiny and do it on, you know, do 12-man teams from different countries on paintball fields with real weapons and put it on pay-per-view. Let it generate its own revenue so it's not sucking our fucking supplies dry, right? Military should be, you should be able to quit anytime you want. That way they'd really have to sell you on the war. They can't just like suck you in with you know, some bullshit, 18 years old, where you don't know what you do. That's what people say. That's not true. They don't all want to kill people. Some people just join the military because they need college money. Then they're idiots and college wasn't going to help. Right? There's plenty of other ways to get college money. Suck a dick. Rob a guy. Steal a car. Steal a pallet of that shit off the forklift you run at UPS and sell it out of a van on a highway off-ramp. Swing around the brass pole a few times, Jessica Lynch. You'll have plenty of college money and never leave West Virginia. Boom. Keep a war going. Don't have a war against terrorism. Jealous. Terrorism's a brilliant form of warfare, sorry. It's being used inappropriately now. The terrorists we have now, they just are bad at it. They're using it in an inappropriate and ineffective fashion, but terrorism is a form of warfare. How do you have a, how do you have rules for war? What's that all about? Oh, that's, uh, you know, the, uh, Saddam Hussein, he was ready to use chemical weapons. That's against the rules. Fuck you, that's a war, faggot. Fight it or get out. <laughs> ain't no rules. It's like, well, yeah, what's a Geneva Convention? Is What's that sick shit? You got rules for, oh, we're, we're gonna kill each other by the hundreds of thousands. Not us, of course, poor people's kids. But if we're gonna do it, let's uh, jot down some rules, right? Uh, what if they, can they hit him in the face with a garden rake, gentlemen? What do you think? Yeah, okay, all right, everyone in, yeah, hit him in the face with a garden rake is okay. What about uh, mason him? No, that's chemical, that's fighting like a fairy. No, mason, that's what girls use, that fight like a girly. Right, it's a, it's a war. I, I, if you attack me, I'm a weaker country. I will use any weapon I, I have. I will, chemical weapon, nuclear weapon, girly eye gouge, sucker nut punch, dog shit in a wrist rocket, whatever's gonna keep you away from me. Go, oh, yeah, it's a war. 
fight it or quit crying, faggot. And yes, if you're in here and you're gay and you're offended that I'm using the word faggot, I apologize and I'll suck your dick after the show. Because faggot's way too good of a word, though. I it just, it's a faggot. It's got to, you know, it's not a, even a gay thing. I, I, I'll suck your dick. I'll turn queer to keep the word. I don't care. My self-respect was shot years ago. I stopped succumbing to the... This. It's like cunt. Cunt is a great word, but it's more its more impressive if you use it on a guy. <laughs> right? You're a fucking cunt. That's all you are. See how it's more powerful because it's confusing. It's like calling a redneck a nigger. They don't have no idea how to react. <laughs> right? <laughs> Terrorism can work. I'm trying to talk my mother into being a suicide bomber right now. Man. Well, seriously, I mean, because she fits, she fits the profile. She's, uh, she's terminally ill. Uh, you know, basically, it hasn't been diagnosed, but I mean, she's she's been chain smoking cool mild 100s for 48 years. She couldn't walk up onto this stage without coughing up chunks of green shit all over your nachos, like some kind of respiratory Gallagher event. <laughs> and she's miserable. She really is a miserable, angry person. I moved her out to Florida six years ago or something. I moved her and her seven cats, get them a one-bedroom apartment in Hollywood, and all she's done in the last six years is sit in that apartment and farm cats and, and chain smoke and bitch. It's down to three cats now with one kind of teetering on the fence. Because they just sit there in her apartment in the secondhand smoke. They, 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 she won't even let them outside and have a decent chance of chucking themselves under a bus tire to fucking end it all, right? They go, they, it's too dangerous on the street. They keep the cats in. So they, so they breathe the secondhand smoke and then it turns into third hand smoke, fourth hand smoke. That's what, the cats, they're like furry air filters. That's all they, all they are. And they're not even furry because they're, they're, they're all greasy with nicotine, like old curtains. And they, and they die right in front of her and she doesn't even notice for days because she's watching Crossing Over with John Edwards trying to fi figure out where she'll be in a month. Drinking dollar store Robitussin trying to cure throat cancer. It's not gonna work, Ma. Come on. And she she's just a hateful, angry, just uh, hates everything. She hates the traffic and she hates the neighbors and this goddamn she hates you and she hates just hates. She's like me without jokes. She's just uh, hateful. <laughs> but she loves me. <laughs> and she'd do anything for me. <laughs> and she's suicidal. I mean, in, in a logical sense, like, it's not a desperate, I can't go on another day. And she's suicidal in that way. She knows that day's coming when, when the lung tumors get bigger than the breast implants. She's going to cash out. She's not, she's not a woman who wants to die with a lot of tubes going in and out of her, milking off the state. Yeah, she's going to cash out. But instead of giving her the big bottle of Xanax and the quart of vodka like my brother and I have planned for her for the last few years. <laughs> Why not instead, seriously, rig her up with some heavy explosives and have her take out some shit we all hate on her way out. Nothing with a political agenda like the terrorists of today. Oh, oh this will solve Middle East peace. Kaboom. No. Just take out some shit that we all hate some personal pet peeve that's an irritant. Have her take out a DUI roadblock or a Ashton Kutcher or you know, something that's an irritant to everybody. Something no one would complain about. Because then, Ter did you ever eat a Subway breakfast sandwich? It's a damn good sandwich, is it? Because it comes on the same bun. It's the regular deli style bun that all the other sandwiches. Every fast food place has to put their breakfast sandwiches on something crazy. It's on a McPancake or a, you know, it's a flaky croissant or a, a wacky biscuit. But the some way you can put it on a regular bun and it comes, you can put vegetables on it. So it gives you the illusion that it's good for you. And I love the placebo effect. I'm a sucker for it, but you can't get it after 11. And I can sleep till 
one or nine at night, depending on what narcotics are still floating around in my system, right? But I still try to get the breakfast sandwich. And I'll go in, hey, come on, uh, uh, give me an egg and cheese. And the kid will say, I'm sorry, sir, uh, it's after 11. We put all that stuff away. <laughs> he didn't put it away. It's in the second green cabinet. It's right there. Come on, it's, this place is as big as a photo mat. There is no away in the building. You don't own away. There's no Brinks truck that pulls up at 1102 and yanks out the eggs under armed guard. And, and you, just, you just programmed to do this, so I don't want to give him shit. I mean, he's got enough shit in his life. He's got to wear a paper hat, and I'm a sandwich artist, polo shirt, and frat guys flick him shit all day long. Dang it, I said no tomatoes, dude. Put tomatoes on it. Shut it. So I don't want to pile onto his misery, but come on. Think, just think this one through. It's just, uh, uh, the entire breakfast menu at Subway consists of nothing but the egg. It's all the same sandwiches they serve all day long, plus an egg. You, you don't have to fire up the griddle for the flapjacks. And, uh, you know, it's not a process like other restaurants who really do have to stop at 11 because they have a real fucking menu, but you don't. You're just stealing their rule for no reason. It doesn't make sense, and I don't want to be a dick to you, but... It's not even a real fucking egg, man. This is a this is a pre-packaged egg-like patty product that sits in a stack of egg patties in the second green cabinet. It's right next to the bacon that you serve all day. If I order a BLT right now, I'll see the away eggs sit right next to it. I see the eggs are not away. And I don't want to give you shit. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Think this through. Uh, please just give me an egg and cheese. And the kid's going to say, I'm sorry, sir. And I'm gonna say, no. This time, I'm sorry. Mother! And mother. Mother will come trudging in her, in her ratty terry cloth bathrobe with C4 explosives strapped head to toe. Cool, mild 100 in one hand, dead cat in the other, like Gail Sayers or a Heisman Trophy plunger, and she's gonna say, goodbye. <laughs> and now terrorism has worked as a positive for all of us. Some big cheese up in the subway tower is gonna read that story and he's gonna go, why didn't he just give him the fucking egg? It's in the second green cabinet if they're going by franchise rules. And I wouldn't kill any, I wouldn't take innocent lives. What I'd do, the mother wants to go, that's her choice. And I wouldn't kill the subway kid because I'd get demolitions experts to rig mother to implode like a skyscraper. So she'd just go, <laughs> and the subway kid would just go, Oh. <laughs> but it would stay with him because he'd think next time, right? It's, it's such a, <laughs> it's such an amazing lack of logic that's prevalent in our society, and everyone just takes it. We just take it. That's just the way it is. <laughs> it's tradition. That's our policy. Fuck that. If it's stupid, change it. That's the law. If it's a dumb law, don't have it, right? <laughs> I'm trying to work on a system just to simplify it so I, like, I think we can, I'm, I'm working on a system where we can eliminate currency worldwide, where we don't even have to use currency so I don't have to figure out math and uh, incomes and debt. I just replace currency with a system of blowjobs and cheeseburgers, because that's really all you need at the end of the day. Uh, nice car, I'll suck your dick for it. Uh, I just got my dick sucked. You, you got anything to eat? All right, here's a cheeseburger. You know? <laughs> There's kinks in the system that I haven't worked at. Hindus, for instance, that's a problem with the cheeseburgers, and I gotta work it all out, but when I do, things are gonna change. Uh, all the other issues I'm pretty tight on. Immigration. I don't, I, I kinda, I, I don't have a, there's too many people in this fucking country. But I think if you're gonna focus on keeping people out, you're gonna focus on the people who don't contribute to society. That's a no-brainer, but and there's a specific group of over four million people that come into this country every year and don't contribute a fucking thing, and everyone knows who I'm talking about, but no one wants to say it because it's politically incorrect, but fuck that. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Officer Bob? 
You know who I'm talking about. Who am I talking? Babies. That's who I'm talking about. Babies. They come out of your hole. They come into this country. They don't speak the language. They don't want to work. They just take and they take and they cause a ruckus and they waste all of our natural resources. I say put the Border Patrol agent at the foot of your uterus. Anything comes out without a visa, you kick it back in the hole. What's your name? You're not on the list. Get back behind the velvet rope. The club is over full. We'll call you when we need you. Sick the amount of people. Oh, Doug, don't you do an anti-baby bit on every CD? Yes, because you won't stop having them, so I'm going to keep saying it. Almost every problem in the world boils down to too many fucking people. And I'm not just talking out of my eye. I had my vasectomy. I have no children. Anyone else had a vasectomy? Who did? Did you? Go, well, get him a drink. That's a true American hero right there. Don't name the fucking Memorial Highway after him after he gets fling. Uh, after that guy. Every time you get a good parking space, there you go. There you go. Remember that guy. Yes, thanks. He's the guy who didn't have someone park in there. Every time you're fucking stuck in traffic, yeah, you think about the breeders when you go, uh, hey, uh, no traffic at all today. Thank you. How long before you blew a nut after you had it? Do you remember? Ten minutes. Uh, two weeks? Yeah, I went eight days. Two weeks at, at eight days. Because they tell you, wait 72 hours. And I, I developed what they call granulo... If, if you don't know how they do a vasectomy, uh, uh, what they do is they go in and they make a, a small incision on each side of your scrot sac, and then they go in with the tweezer things and they remove your... Uh, courage and your confidence and your social skills and your sense of humor and your need for any personal hygiene and they replace it with a violent fear of sneezing so i had that done out of respect for the world and then they're telling me and then i get granulomas is where you continue to leak semen in your bag sack and then your bag sack starts swelling up bigger and bigger every day did you get that no, it's fucking. I have pictures of it on my website because people thought I was exaggerating. It's fucking. It was. A, it was a like I called it the Hinden bag. It was like a hippity hop in between my legs. It was like the blueberry kid from Willy Wonka. Is just gonna. Be, and they're telling me wait 72 hours. I'm going. What kind of superheroes checking off with this going on six days in? I was like, I wait. I waited eight days, and the only. And I didn't even want to jack off then, but uh, you go eight days without... I've never gone eight days in my natural load-blowing life without emptying <laughs> off. But weird shit happens in your head after that amount of time. I, I'm, get, I'm getting deviant thought watching TV commercials that don't even have people in them. Okay, I could do something. I jacked off with my eyes closed and two fingers is squinting like a, like a little girl in a horror movie. <laughs> I don't want to see what's coming out of there. Blood or stitches or chili. I didn't think I needed a vasectomy. I was like a, some convenient frame of mind. Because I've been, I've, I've dumped irresponsible nuts for my whole life and never came up unlucky, right? With the baby. So I, I thought, I, I figured with all the shit I've done to my body, I, I was surprised I... I had sperm that was still white, much less potent. <laughs> exactly. So I, and then I knock up my wife a year and a half ago. It was the first abortion. It was the only abortion I've had, but it was might have been the longest abortion of all time. It took a month to have. Has any, anyone had an abortion? You're all wrapped with attention now, all of a sudden. And so I assume you all have. It's a fucking horrible thing to go through. Uh, and not horrible in that, oh, it's a living thing. What are we doing? Fuck the living thing. A genital wart is a living thing. It, if it's going to irritate you for life, burn it off, right? Get the fuck <laughs> Bladder cancer is alive and growing like a baby in you. If you try to remove that, I'll protest you and say, stop playing God. <laughs> it's horrible in the... Because... We panicked and didn't do any research. and Because uh, you have options when it comes to abortion now. It's not like 1955 where you just had to kick her down a staircase and hope for the best, right? You got, you got, you got, 
you feed her. You feed her a tapeworm and hope it takes a left at the Y. Right? <laughs> now, you, I mean, you have medical options. I was hoping that you had the option of doing it live on a crowded airplane so it might serve as an example to living babies on that were already on board and thinking about screaming through the whole flight. A little scared straight program for the infants, but... Can't do that, but... But we did the RU486, because it sounded easy. Yeah, it sounds like, oh, it's an abortion pill. Hey, what do you want, surgery or a pill? And you go, oh, that sounds like you just take a Flintstone vitamin and you wait for the abortion fairy to come and she leaves a quarter under your womb and no one knows, no one's the wiser. But no, it was, it was a long story and I won't get into the graphic details about, but it took a month to have this. And what was more fucked up is how they treat you. They, I don't know if it was just this clinic because we had to go to two different ones of the same brand but they were all fucking assholes and they treated you like shit because they can and that's a problem even though abortion is legal yeah for a limited time only get them while they're hot girls because john ashcroft came to town he knows your body better than you trust your government that blue light special is about to end but but even though it's legal it still lives in that gray area of shame where if you even bring it up in a like, basement drunken comedy club, it creates a church-like bingo hall silence. And that's, and that's how they treat you like shit, because they can get away with it. It's like, it's like dildos, right? They're legal, except in Mississippi, you're going to jail for that. They're legal. Say you want to go to get a dildo tonight. You go out to the smut shop. You want to you get a nice top shelf fucking blue wiggler, and you bring it home, and you jam the batteries in it. And but then the neck doesn't swivel quite right for the G spot, and then the little rubber rabbit doesn't quite reach your clitoris like it says it will on the box. What are you gonna do? Bring it back? <laughs> you had to get half liquored up on draft beer just to walk into that joint, much less stop by Monday morning on the way to your accountant position when you're, uh, I need to talk to someone. This doesn't reach my clitoris or something. Can I try on a different one? They're gonna tell you to pound sand and get out of the store. Who are you gonna call? The Better Business Bureau? I have clitoral rights and I was denied them. It's the same with an abortion. You know, they know they can be as, uh, they know I'm not going to walk into a crowded clinic with my wife and slap my hand down on the floor, Micah. This is the worst abortion I have ever had. I want to see your manager. I want to talk to your manager. You call this an abortion? That's a, I would be embarrassed to put out this kind of workmanship, my friend. I'm going to tell my friends about this. Yes, I am. I'm not going to have my abortions here anymore. You have lost a very valuable customer today, my friend. I am cutting up my priority club membership card. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna fucking stare at me like you don't have any? Yeah, fine. Before you actually go and get all quiet and pissy like I'm some asshole about this, keep in mind, I'm just telling you the parts that I think are funny. You don't know the reason we had, the reason we had an abortion was, we had, it wasn't because, it wasn't frivolous. We didn't have an abortion because we weren't ready to take care of a child and we're irresponsible or because we're not financially capable of taking, the, the reason we had it is because I really wanted to see what it felt like to kill a baby. I just didn't want you to judge. You know, your, your priest will tell you... Your priest will tell you that abortion is wrong because your priest will tell you that life begins at conception. But a priest will also tell you it's okay to suck his dick when you're only 12. So maybe his timing's just off. Here's what everyone seems to overlook with the whole priest molestation scandal, if you think about it with all the horrible, horrible shit that your priest is pumping into your kid's head, his dick should be the least of your worries, honestly. That's just a little bit of mouthwash and a few years of therapy will get rid of that. That Jesus shit will torture you for a lifetime. 
We sent our boy to church so he could learn a lifetime of guilt, shame, self-hatred, all the things we enjoy. And then the priest flopped out his how do you do right in front of the child. Who's the abuser? How come you never told us this was happening to him? Because you're a freak and a prude and you can't... Anytime that kid came to you with anything of a sexual nature, you probably freaked out and cramped up and pruded up and sent him to church to deal with it where he got fucked in the face again. There's an old vicious circle. Mommy, is it normal for an older man to have sex with a young boy my age right in his mouth? Where do you get these ideas, Kevin? Who's telling you these things? It's horrible. Sex is not like, sex is something that you, well, sex is for people that, why don't you go talk to Father Hanrahan about this right now? No! <laughs> but mommy, I was trying to tell you that he's the one who's gonna do. <laughs> and then they have big get togethers with the, Cardinals and the bishops and a, every big ha Halloween hat gets together in one high ceilinged venue to discuss how to punish the offending priest. What do we do to punish him? They're mouth fucking all the kids. What do we do? I'll tell you what you do. You go, you want to know how to punish him? You go back to the Bible, hypocrite. It's in Leviticus. It's that same passage they used to justify the death penalty. What does it say? Eye for an eye, exactly. If it works for the death penalty, then it should work just fine for your priest molestation issue. A priest fucks your kid in the face, you tell him, Billy, you march your ass back over to that church right now. You fuck that priest in his mouth. See how he likes it. Go on, boy. Give it to him good. Give it to him good. I ain't raising no sissies. <laughs> Now the church is all upset about the gay marriage. Why? It's one of those trick arguments. Where everyone's, it's a big issue that doesn't really fucking matter, but at the same time, the, the, the arguments don't matter. Oh, the gay should not get married. It's gonna ruin families. What is, what do we have every right? Marriage should not be a legal institution. That's the argument you should be having that no one will, the government should have no, place in your love life that should not if you want to get married it should be like joining a fraternity where you you know you want to get married you go to your church or your Chuck E. Cheese and they do a crazy rain dance around you and some incantation and puffoom if you're a married person it doesn't mean anything if it well what about tax breaks well, fuck it. if you want tax breaks incorporate right the government should only look at you as an individual no matter what Right? What if you're a fucking idiot and you're ugly? It's like the carpool lane. You can't find someone to marry. It's discrimination. Right? It should not be a legal institution. It shouldn't exist. If marriage didn't exist, would you invent it? Would you go, baby, this shit we got together, it's so good, we gotta get the government in on this shit. We can't just share this commitment between us. We need judges and lawyers involved in this shit, baby. It's hot. <laughs> but someone invented it and now you're gonna do it or you're an asshole right it's like secretary's day every day was fine when you shuffled into the office till someone said oh it's secretary's day and you're now you're a dick if you don't bring her flowers someone invented marriage and now you're a dick if you don't marry her and i'm a dick if i don't show up and it's a boring ego maniacal ritual that no one wants to go to don't ever for a second think that someone wants to be at your wedding it's the most boring horrifying experience it's like watching someone make out on a bus for six hours you're gonna wear your nicest clothes and show up bring presents and tell witty anecdotes and I have watched you, my friend up there going, you know, I'm gonna tell you what love and commitment mean to me. Because the first time I saw Laura Ann, my heart swelled up like a boy. If I'm gonna be that privy to your most intimate details, I'd rather just watch you fuck. That's a, that's a wedding. Yeah, let's just, let me watch you fuck with a miner's cap and get in there and see all the fucking boils and fucking heat bumps and yeah, that. Gross. 
It's a, it's a trick argument. There's so many, a Pledge of Allegiance is in the Supreme Court, and that's another trick argument. Under God should be in the Pledge of Allegiance. No, it shouldn't. We don't need a Pledge of Allegiance, say that. What, why do you need that brainwashing cult shit? If you have a good product, kids will figure it out on their own. You don't need advertising. 12 years of forced advertising, right? You've done drugs in here by applause, right? At some point? Did you have a good time? Did you ever see him advertised? Nope. <laughs> Didn't need to. You get a good product, people come around. You don't need that shit. Well, you do have to have under God in there because the founding fathers based this country on the principles of Christianity. <laughs> You want to worry about the Pledge of Allegiance, worry about the under, not the under God part, worry about the liberty and justice for all. Talk to him in two years and see, see what justice is all about. Right? And liberty, liberty, the, the meaning of liberty, the, the dictionary definition, liberty means freedom from government restriction and control. Not only do we not have liberty, who has less liberty then the children you make say this. That's the irony. They get the least liberty of anyway. We don't have it. They got thick. They can't do shit. We have the oldest children in the world in this country. We don't let them do shit forever. They can't do shit. They can't drink. They can't smoke. They can't drive. They can't vote. They can't work. They can't fuck, for God's sakes. And you wonder why your teenager is such an asshole. You wonder why he's sitting in a Taco Bell parking lot after the Friday night high school football game, he's keying cars and he's smearing dog shit on your door handles for no particular reason. It's because he's bored out of his tit. You won't do, let him do anything else. You watch on the news, you see a 10-year-old kid in a third world country. He's got an AK-47 and a death stare looking right into the camera. That kid's not out spray painting overpasses on Saturday night. He's got shit to do. He's got a whole agenda. You learn by fucking up, and it takes you until you fucked up a bunch of times to learn. There's no magic number. You want to fix the Pledge of Allegiance, put a disclaimer at the end. <laughs> With liberty and justice for all. Must be 18, void where prohibited. Some restrictions may apply. Not available in all states. <laughs> How do you pledge allegiance to a government? How do you do that? That's the dumbest thing. It's all America is is a government. There's no such thing as we're Americans. That's just trivial bullshit to get you on the playing, rooting for the home team, right? You're, you're, you're not an American. You're a guy or a chick or whatever. You're a person. That's, you're an individual. That's it. What's that? Until the Mongols come over the hills swinging machetes trying to take our fucking fire hazard underground comedy club away from us. Yeah, then we all buddy up as one. But those days are over. There's no one trying to take over America. We weren't on the verge of speaking Iraqi, right? But as far as America goes, uh, there's two countries in the world. Uh, dick and not a dick. Those are the only two countries. The border goes all the way around like that, you know? Did you ever go to another country and meet another American when you didn't expect to? You're, you're down in Costa Rica, out in the jungle, trying to fuck a monkey so you have a friend uh, story to tell your buddy, and you, you, and you wind up meeting another American, and you didn't expect to. You always talk to him just on the trivia. Hey, you're from America. I'm from America. Where are you from? And it's never more than three sentences before you realize, if I was in America, I wouldn't talk to this douchebag if my hair was on fire and he held a monopoly on liquid. What, what does that mean? I'm, an, I'm, no, I'm no more of an American than I am an Aries or an uncle. It's something you called me and I just was here. Right? I just showed up you called me something. If you're going to pledge blind allegiance and call yourself a, American for a government, that fucks you on a regular basis. <laughs> Democracy's the worst kind, I'm sorry, but it is. We get to pick our leaders. Well, what if I don't want a leader? Where does that vote go? I do good on my own. I don't want to be led. <laughs> is, that, is that freedom? American Idol was the number one show on television for the last two years. Those are the people picking your leaders with less insight than they put into whether fucking Ruben Stoddard should win an award. Or, it's dumb. You're gonna, would you call yourself a Christian if they had a new Jesus every four years? 
you want to make a difference in the world, here's some things you can do. First, you work for a major corporation, fuck stuff up, break stuff. It's good for the economy. It drives their prices up. It makes the small businessman competitive again. I, again, I'm bad with math, but I think that one will work. <laughs> trade out when you can. Don't buy things if you don't have to buy things. If you can trade out, if you're a, a, a pool cleaner and you're a carpet layer, don't buy each other's products, trade out. And that's how you fuck the tax man. They have so much of your money, they piss right in your face and they, they waste it and they go, ha, huh, look at how much of your money we're wasting. Take it, you pitch. Fucking take my piss. They spent $30 million advertising the new $20 bill. $30 million to, to put TV ads. This is the new $20 bill. Who's the competition? What do you need to advertise? Ah, well, we had to spare $30 million because we're pissing in his face. Ah, give me $30 million while I'm fucking pissing in your face. What do you think? I'm going to start spending Costa Rican colones if you don't give me... Uh, I don't like the new uh, 20. It's, uh, it's more of an autumn color. I'm a spring. Uh, <laughs> Trade out, they'd piss your money away like a bad MC Hammer behind the music story. And if you trade out, you can avoid that. You get my point. Here's the most important thing. Now that the cop's out of the room, we can talk about this. Here's the most important, I only got four minutes left up here. Take jury duty. This is how you beat him. Everyone tries to get out of jury duty like it's a big pain in the ass, but it's honestly the easiest way you can make a difference as a single human being. If you take jury duty and it's any kind of bullshit crime, any kind of you know, drug possession, any prostitution, any victimless crime, anything that's none of your goddamn business, and it, you just say not guilty. If it's any kind of IRS bullshit, any .09 DUI, come on. You say not guilty. If it's any kind of class action lawsuit where some douchebag, her kid died in some weird fashion and she deserves compensation because there was no warning on the box that if her kid swallowed a Lincoln log sideways that he could have a bad day. So she wants $8.5 million because nothing spells relief of loss of a loved one like $8.5 million. It's just the principle of the thing. Yeah. Sue for a buck. <laughs> it's about my baby. It's about the Lincoln Logs. It's terrible. Not guilty. <laughs> See what I'm saying? No matter how guilty they obviously are. In fact, the more guilty they obviously are, the funnier it is when you say, not guilty. <laughs> The guy can be guilty as shit and sweating, big shaky crackhead and making up lies, yanking rabbits out of his ass for the judge. Yeah, no, Your Honor, I, I was down in Columbia. I was in Columbia because I had to take a landscaping job for a weekend through a temp agency. I was a Kelly girl uh, mowing lawns, but down in Bogota, you gotta work naked for some reason. It's a weird custom that they have, but I didn't want to complain. I needed the gig, man. My rent was due. So I was bending over to pull start that lawnmower, and all of a sudden, a small, dart-headed frog that's indigenous to the area, it sprung out of the shrubbery, and it went fa-foom right into my rectum. I, and then I went delirious from the toxins in its skin. I blacked out, and the next thing I know, I'm walking through customs with a condom full of coke in my colon. <laughs> And you say, same thing happened to me, not guilty. And then you go do bumps with the guy. You can make a difference. You just have to find the grip. You don't live in a free country. You got the flag on your shirt there. Oh, it's upside down. You're fucking sweet. It's not a free country. You're born free. I mean, you're born absolutely free, except for laws of nature. Those, if you drink, you get drunk. That's a law. If you, if you get old, you die. That's a law, too. If you sit on a tack, you will bleed from the ass. These are the only laws that you're born with, and any government just fucks you out of that type of freedom. If you, if you really think you're free tonight, you, hero, Officer Bob, you're a free man. You live in a free country, but you're just, you go upstairs, you take your own beer you risk your life for. You sit on the hood of your monster truck in the parking lot, drink your beer, and see how long it is before actual veteran cops come by and pound on you with truncheons on the kidneys to show, why, why can't I do it? I'm just having a beer. What? I don't know. 
That's the law, though. You don't fuck around. You can't drive down the street without a seatbelt on. Why not? I don't know. You're gonna put on a helmet. You can't sit in your own backyard naked. Your own filthy, dirty flesh that you're born with. You know that body you carry around? Filthy. You can't sit up. Why not? I don't know. That's just the way it is. Mother! <laughs> you're not free. You're not free in the least. You need a diploma in this country to cut hair. You're free. You need to keep your tray in an upright and locked position during takeoff. It's not just a hack premise. It's a fucking felony. And uh, Cunty the Hero Sky Couple, I can throw you off the plane as a terrorist for going, why do I have to have this? This doesn't make sense. They say if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish... Then he's got to get a fishing license, but he doesn't have any money. So he's got to get a job, and he has to get into the social security system and pay taxes. And now you're going to audit the poor cocksucker, because he's not really good with math. You pull the IRS van up to your house, he'll take all your shit. He'll take your black velvet Elvis, and your Batman toothbrush, and your penis pump, and that all goes up for auction with the burden of proof on you, because you forgot to carry the one, because you were just worried about eating a fucking fish and you couldn't even cook the fish because you needed a permit for an open flame and then the health department is going to start asking you a lot of questions about where are you going to dump the scales and the guts this is not a sanitary environment and ladies and gentlemen if you get it if you get sick of it all at the end of the day not even legal to kill yourself in this country thanks again john ashcroft you weird bible addict can't even handle his own drug you were born free, you got fucked out of half of it, and you wave a flag celebrating. <laughs> hey, don't hold back. You got an argument? No, keep going. Keep going. The only true freedom that you find is when you realize and come to terms with the fact that you are completely and unapologetically fucked, and then you are free to float around the system. Thank you guys very much for coming out tonight. Good night.